Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rufila Matilla, a twin mom, radio broadcaster, and just a simple girl trying to make it through this life. So thank you so much for clicking on this link. If you are new here, do join us. Hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. It is free. It is mahala. So that when you enjoy this content, you get reminders every time I post, which is currently weekly right and to those who have already subscribed thank you so much for your constant love and support i hope we can grow together on this channel and just go through this motherhood natural hair journey life thing together so as you can tell by the title of the video i have stopped breastfeeding the twins and I thought I would come onto the channel and just share a little bit about what informed my decision around that, my mentality, where I was and all that was happening um, around me. Breastfeeding is a very rewarding practice I found. It is, uh, you know, it, it affirmed me as, you know, like a mom, as that caregiver in their life. But it can also be very, very challenging and very, very uh tedious right um there's so many things that you need to figure out and i find that maybe this was for me in my house household and within my family that there aren't so many conversations about like the details of breastfeeding of course when you speak to moms and grandmothers and aunties and all of that and other women in your life uh, they may encourage you to breastfeed but we don't really talk about the mechanics of it and I think that is what can trip up so many women can make you feel a little disheartened and discouraged um, so yeah I'll be sharing as much as I can through this video and comment below if you'd like to know any more details let's get to it so we chose breastfeeding as our preferred method of feeding the babies for a number of reasons but the very main one being that breast milk is indeed the best for children right breast is best was that saying is that saying and through so many um you know uh, studies that you can find online through speaking to your doctor, your gynae, your pediatrician, they will advise you to at least give it a try. That was in my scenario, right? Where the doctors definitely said, look, uh, I think this is the best way to go. And personally, it had been something that I've wanted to do for the longest time i knew that when i became a mom that i would want to breastfeed and thank god for my partner who also felt the need um that or saw the importance rather of breastfeeding infants so it was for the benefit the health of the baby uh, the studies that show that they have improved iq that it's great for their immune system it provides um, protection for their bodies there are a whole host of reasons and also another one personally for me is the bonding time while many may think that we chose breastfeeding for the financial um, saving not really it was more what the milk will actually do for the baby it's just so miraculous how when your child is sick and they can latch onto the breast there's a communication that happens right between the breast between the child's uh, body between both bodies right and if the child is sick and they need some form of uh, correct me if I'm wrong to all the doctors and the other mommies antibodies your body as a mom can start producing those those good benefits those things that they need right and it all happens through your breast milk it is just absolutely mind-boggling it is magic breast milk is so great and ideal that even on a tin of formula they do write there that it is recommended that you breastfeed your baby that you know breast is best but we know that there are so many situations where it doesn't work out for moms and that's a different you know conversation on its own let me take you back to starting at the hospital so we made the decision to breastfeed the babies and now it was time to go and deliver the babies i had already had conversations with my gynae that i would be opting to breastfeed so the nurse Nursing staff and the nursing team were aware of what my plans and intentions were. So after the C-section, babies are born, were rolled back into our room, daddy was there. And I kid you not, I thought I would have like 30 minutes just to like, whoo, <laughs> ease up, relax a little bit. But nope, the nurses came through with military precision. 
like unstrapping my gown, helping me position. I think it was within 30 minutes and the babies, we were already trying to latch the babies onto, onto my breasts. It was amazing. I didn't expect it to start so soon, um, but that's how in tune, I think, you know, the nursing staff, myself and uh, my doctors, all the healthcare professionals were in tune and understood the assignment. They understood what needed to be done. I, a first time mom, I did not know that, you know, we need to get them on the breast ASAP. It was very interesting at the hospital having the level of support that I did. Now, I think because I'm a twin mom, I may have gotten just a little bit of extra attention, but the nurses were very kind in helping me position the babies. They showed me how to tandem feed. It is something that I had already been reading up about, but the first time the babies latched on, we were tandem feeding and that pretty much, you know, became the story for the rest of our nine months of breastfeeding so the nurses would cut the babies in and out in and out they'd give me time to sleep take the babies to the nursery bring them back when they need to feed um, at some point it was both of them at one time and then I think they would go off of their sleeping patterns I'd be woken up throughout the night right so you hear one baby being rolled down carted down the passage you're like mm, okay let me set up switch on this light that one is definitely mine <laughs> so they would do that they'd bring both babies they'd bring one or the other they would help and support they would um you know they're quite hands-on so if you're squeamish about nurses touching you and stuff bona nurses are going to touch you at the hospital that's what they're there to do so they would help me latch ensure that the baby has you know um latched onto the nipple correctly you want the lips flared let me know if you want like a whole detailed video about you know uh correct breastfeeding practices as far as i know as a twin mom and what we were able to do so the nurses were very very helpful in that regard get yourself a team of medical professionals that will understand what your goals are and be the ultimate support that you need so let's start into some of the reasons or some of the factors i believe were pushing me towards breastfeeding returning back to work was one of the biggest challenges leaving the babies after being with them day in, day out, you know, non-stop, literally from the minute that they were born, we were inseparable. That took some adjusting to do, right? Because now it's no longer me just quickly popping up, popping out to the store, right? Just going to the shops for no more than an hour. This was you getting back to what your eight day, or well, my eight day or what, how many ever hours of a working day that you have, which is a huge adjustment. So let me bring you into my, my frame of mind. What we were doing with the babies were essentially feeding every two to three hours around the clock, night and day. At night, at some point, as they were getting older, as the months were going along, their stretches of sleeping in the evenings were getting longer and longer and longer. But more or less, to give you a rough idea, every two to three hours we're feeding. So imagine trying to feed or pump every two to three hours in a work environment. It's different. Your colleagues are all around. You're stuffed in some musty office if you're lucky enough to, you know, have your um, employer provide a room for you. It's not as comfortable as being at home where you can pump or breastfeed with ease. So all these stress stress factors come into play, right? Uh, getting ready in the work, getting uh, leaving the child with the minder or getting the babies ready for crash. It, it's stress. It's daily stress of getting back to the office. It's driving through traffic. It's your manager being up and all of these things happening to you really can affect your supply of breast milk. So that's what happened to me. Three months, maternity is over. The babies now, you know, need to um, go to preschool or crash, uh, and I need to get back to work. That affected my supply. I saw that I was losing just a little bit of a milk supply. So I would send, we would send the babies to school with. 10 bottles of about 120 mils of breast milk. I found that once I got back to work, I could only pump 
about eight bottles, which meant we were short. So going to the pediatrician and all of that, I spoke to him um, about my concerns, my stresses. And one thing that will tell a doctor about how your child is doing health-wise are their measurements. It's their weight. So they'll look at things like that and will advise you on, you know, which course or which way to go. At that point, that's when we introduced formula. I was not keen on the idea at all and dad wasn't as well we just believed you know that breast is best and we're going to try and make it work you know to our hardest i think he saw my efforts and he th saw how i was struggling at that three month mark and we both agreed to it of course we're going to agree to it it's for the benefit of our babies and and that's when we um implemented formula so they would get uh, a bottle of formula each so remember it's 10 bottles for the day which means eight are breast milk only these two these two <laughs> these two are a formula and that's how we went for about a month a month and a half while i was adjusting to my new normal of getting back to work and having the kids and having to pump and breastfeed I then managed to pick up my supply. There are a whole host of tips and things that you can do in order to boost and, and pick up your supply. But the stress factor, I believe for me, was what was making that supply reduce. But you need to fight. That was the beginning of the end for me. But I fought, I fought through and we made it all the way to nine months. So I was an exclusively breastfeeding mom for a very long time, but having to leave the babies with other people to take care of them so I could go to work meant that I need to up my pumping game. So I got a double breast pump, which is the best thing that you can do. Even if you're a mom to a singleton, get yourself a double breast pump so that when you are aware, you are absolutely maximizing on how much milk you can express and get out. And remember, you can freeze a uh, breast milk the day that it is pumped uh, for up to a year you can keep it in your freezer I think for up to a year so do yourself that favor even if you're planning ahead on stopping breastfeeding if you're trying to set an end date for yourself it doesn't mean that the milk supply needs to dry up at that same time you could still have milk in the freezer because remember this is good for baby so I really 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 um you know was adamant about pumping. I would pump at work. I would sometimes even pump in the car, you know, driving because it's a 20 or so minute drive for me going to work and coming back. I would pump, I would pump everywhere. I was pumping in the office while walking around. God bless my colleagues because they just understood. I had this blue uh, blanky shawl thing that I just tie around, right? Tie around my breasts like this and it would hang over and everything would be covered. And underneath there, I'm getting to work. I am getting to work. We are pumping Hwasebetsu. Hwasebetsu, we're making what? Milk. <laughs> so it, it was great. It, it was such an amazing time. It was just like multitasking on a level that I had never. I would be reading traffic reports on air while pumping. I would be broadcasting a music show while pumping on air. It, it, Bona. we a girl was getting to it I found my rhythm and you know uh, we we were working through it uh, as the babies grow they need more volumes of breast milk which can add to more stress so while I was pumping on the go you always keep track of how much you've pumped per session right um, the right breast at tw at nine o'clock in the morning gave you 180 mils and the left gave you 120 and then you're going to pump again a few hours later and now you're at work right you've read the emails you're, you're fully in the environment and now you're stressed and now the right breast is only giving you 40 mils and the left breast is only giving you 42 mils stress you're already stressed towards the next pumping session and that is how i saw my milk supply almost decreasing a little by little let me also paint you a picture of how stressful it was for me i had to carry around you know the smallest you know when you buy a luggage set and you get the the smallest of the bags that's what i carried i did not carry a handbag anymore girls it was not cute i had my pump my pumping supplies, my nipple cream, a water bottle, um, milk bags or Ziploc bags, all the pots and tubes and the connectors and everything. Born, I was just a walking 
breast milk factory at that point. It became tedious, it became very difficult to Another make. factor that added to the stress of it all was that Tapang started teething very early. She started teething at four months and what happens moms? <coughs> they chomp down on your nipple while breastfeeding. And for me, at first, when she just had gums, that was okay, you know, whatever, cool. And once she had like her bottom two poking out, ah, it was a wrap, babes. It was a wrap. It was the most painful thing because she would just chomp down with all her little force. I don't know, because maybe the milk was flowing too much or she was getting bored, she was getting distracted, she was full at that time, but it would hurt, it would hurt. I immediately, you know, started calling my mom to say, mom, this is what's happening. What should I do? My mom's like, ah, I'm a passing. Like with two little fingers just boop on her forehead when she does it and she will stop or, you know, whatever, just stop and, and say no, you know, with a very an, an authoritative voice. I tried that, baby, it did not work. I went on to all my mom groups on Facebook. Um, I was reading articles. I am a Google mom and I'm not ashamed of it. And all of the tips that they had, I tried, I tried, I tried, and it just wasn't working. What would help me was though, I knew that the biting would pass. So she would bite consistently for about a week or five days. And after that, it would stop. So we would, you know, keep flowing. Things were great. Up until the point where she had many many teeth and now it was really becoming painful to the point where at some point she she bit me and i thought i i was bleeding i was like no can't do this so what i then did for her is that i fully transitioned her to bottles like she was just getting breast milk via a bottle had a babes it is what it is let me know down below in the comments what that time was like for you when your baby started teething and what are the suggestions for moms because i think i tried everything it just did not work for me and it, it, it was terrible it was terrible because i felt that i was othering my baby right so tepiso was still all gums not teething yet he could go onto the breast and that was fine and sabang my poor baby girl had to be bottle fed and i was just like i miss you though i miss our time our bonding our connection <laughs> let me know down below what did your mother or what do other moms recommend for when baby is teething and you are still a breastfeeding mom because let me tell you that thing is not nice one of the other stressful factors or contributing factors to why I stopped breastfeeding at nine months was the constant eating. So when you are making breast milk, your body is burning up energy. It is using calories, right? So to remember, form this miracle milk inside of your breast it definitely does take some energy. It's got to take something from somewhere, right? So you're drinking water and you're eating a balanced diet, a nutritious diet, a balanced diet, so that you can draw all of those nutrients from what you eat and make them in your breast milk and pass that along to baby because you are the primary feeding source. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. You're the primary feeding source. So you need to ensure that you take care of yourself. That's a huge part. And I think our mothers and grandmothers do so well in this aspect when it comes to the support that they show to a new mom, a breastfeeding mom. They will feed you. You will eat everything, mutoho, oats. Uh, you'll drink lots of tea, lots of water, lots of liquids. You'll eat fruit, you'll eat veggies, or tajanama. It is one of the most beautiful things we'll have to talk about Sidzueti because I want to go back to that because that was I was living large meals were just finding their way to me it was beautiful so um I googled and they said it takes about a thousand more calories right um over your pre-pregnancy diet in order to create enough breast milk for twins so I was eating around the clock so breakfast was a big bowl of oats. That was also something that I uh, started picking up on more during when I went back to work, that oats actually can help boost your supply. I'll drop a link to 
uh, my world breastfeeding week video up here so in the cart and I'll also put it down in the description box so you need to eat 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 I'm snacking I'm eating I'm drinking water it just became too much especially at a point in your life where you're back at work and you're busy you know how it gets sometimes you skip meals and when I personally would skip meals I would see how that actually at times would affect my breast my breast milk supply in a day I had to pump anywhere between 1.2 to 1.4 liters of breast milk. So let me tell you that I was on, I had to be on point. Everything had to happen at the time it had to happen and I had to maintain quite a lot. And it starts to affect you mentally because you get tired of doing the same thing, right? At some point you just want to slack off, but if you slack off, you know that your babies won't have breast milk. It is a challenge, but it is such a rewarding thing to do for your child, to do for yourself. A breastfeed if you can, mummies. I'm even contemplating now, the twins are a year now, I'm even contemplating on building back my supply. On some days, I can feel that, you know, my breasts swell up and I haven't squeezed in a while, but in the beginning, shortly after I had stopped, about three months after, something would still come out so if you can breastfeed mommy please please by all means give it your all try your best formula is not terrible but it is personally in my opinion um it's a second option it's a secondary option you know so why have long life milk when you can have fresh milk from a cow it's it's delicious it's great for you it's uh less it's and what is it unpasteurized less chemicals less things are gone through have gone through it in order to make it what it is right so do try your best to continue on your breastfeeding journey for me it just became a little bit unsustainable i won't lie i am entertaining the thought of building back up my supply to see if I can't store and freeze the milk for them or start adding some of the breast milk back to their diets uh, to push them to two, two and a half years. My personal goal was to breastfeed until the babies were two and a half years old. But unfortunately, I had to call it a day at nine months. That's my story. If you'd like more details, Please comment down below in the comment box, like the video, share it, and do come again and watch another video. Thank you so, so much. Follow me on Instagram if you'd like to see more of the babies at Fifi underscore CM.